Hello, it's me again, Dr. Babatunde Okewale. Today I'll be talking about cervical causes of infertility. We rarely talk about the cervical causes. Most times when we talk about um, female causes of infertility, we talk about um, ovulation problem, we talk about tubal problem, but the cervix can be important as well. The uterus and the cervix contribute about 10% of female infertility. And out of that 10%, less than 5%, could be due to the cervix. Now, where is the cervix? The cervix is that part of the uterus that projects inside the vagina and it acts as a gateway for the sperm and the egg that is produced from the ovary. So what it means is if the cervix denies the sperm from passing inside the womb, pregnancy will not occur. So it's a gateway into the reproductive tract. The second thing that the cervix does is it produces mucus. We have what we call pre-ovulation mucus. That pre-ovulation mucus operates under a high estrogen and low progesterone level in such a way that the mucus becomes thin and it becomes a cellular. And what that does is it aids sperm to pass through it inside the womb. We also have what we call the post-ovulation mucus which is again produced in the cervix but what that one does is immediately ovulation has occurred it clamps up because it's operating under a high progesterone and low estrogen level and what that does is it makes the mucus thicker and also very cellular so the cervix is a very important gateway that could make or unmake infertility now, what are the cervical causes? Like I said, less than 5% of female infertility is due to the cervix. The first thing is, if a cervix is stenosed or it is scared, usually due to operation, when we talk about operation, when we say stenosed, it means nothing can pass through. It's gummed together. And when we say it's scared, it means it's been involved in an addition and scar tissues are around it. This usually follows surgery, some form of surgery onto the cervix. And the type of surgery that could cause stenosis and scarring of the cervix are cone biopsy, electrocautery, or a DNC. So those are part of the causes of cervical cause of infertility. Other causes are chronic infection. Now what chronic infection of the cervix does is, it destroys the mucus that we talked about earlier. And once it destroys those mucus, then the different hormonal changes that affect the mucus will not be able to happen again. So the endocervical glands that produce mucus are very important. And if infection destroys that, then it becomes very difficult for sperm to pass through. Other things are anti-sperm antibodies. Sometimes the cervical mucus and the sperm form antibodies against each other in such a way that sperm cannot pass through. It's a very minute cause of infertility, but it does occur. Another cause is what we call malposition of the cervix. Normally, the relationship between the uterus and the cervix is in a way in which the uterus is slightly pointed forward in what we call antiverted uterus. Now, if it's pointed forward like this, let's say this is the womb, and this is the cervix. The cervix is looking directly in the vagina. That's how the relationship is in, in about 80% of women. Sometimes it's retroverted. That is, this womb, the uterus, is pointed slightly backward. But if you look at this, you'll see that the cervix is still pointed downwards into the vagina. That's still no problem. But there's a type of malposition called um, extreme or acutely and um, retroverted uterus in which case this uterus is bent very backward in such a way that this cervix becomes perpendicular to the uh, to the vagina 
And what happens in such situation is the sperm that is deposited in the vagina cannot access the cervix and that becomes a barrier. That can be a cause of cervical cause of infertility. Finally, there are some cervix that are congenitally abnormal. So how do you diagnose a cervical cause of infertility? The first thing is to take a very good history from the woman, especially sexual history, sexually transmitted history, and then you do a complete vaginal examination. When I say complete vaginal examination, it includes a speculum examination. If you use a Costco speculum and look at the cervix, you can know in which direction a cervix is pointing. You can know whether there is any cervical stenosis, whether there is any injury or scarring in the cervix. Sometimes, depending on when you do the examination, you can even check the mucus of the cervix to try and see whether there is any problem. An ultrasound scan can also, be, um, also help in evaluation of the cervix. Infection screening is very important. Like I said earlier on, chronic infection tend to destroy the endocervical gland, which produces cervical mucus. So how do you treat cervical cause of infertility? There are various ways. If the problem is infection, you give antibiotics. And the antibiotics is usually long term, not the short term antibiotics that you take just for five days, especially if it's a chronic infection. If it is an antibody um, to the sperm problem, then you can either give a steroid or you do what we call a condom therapy. But generally speaking, for most cervical problems that is affecting infertility, the best way of treating is through assisted conception technique. The first one is IUI and the second one is either IVF or ICSI. And the reason for that is they bypass the cervix. In IUI, you don't need the cervix because you're going to put your tube that is containing sperm directly inside the womb. And in IVF, fertilization will occur outside before you return um, the embryo inside the womb. For more information on cervical causes of infertility, I will advise you get my book. It's called How to Get Pregnant and Have a Baby. This book is available on Amazon. It's also available in Nigeria if you order from all our social media and also through our website www.stivesheathcare.com. I have a new book as well. It's called The Art of Making Babies. It's available on Amazon and also on all our social media um, pages. Mm -hmm.